Show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth and teach us, for you are the God of our salvation. In you have we trusted all the day long. When you have something big ahead, something important, you prepare for it. No matter what it is, if it is important, you prepare. It could be a court trial a report before the board, the defense of your dissertation. It could, be, it could be 10 rounds in the ring with Apollo Creed. It could be uh, bronc busting at the rodeo, but you're gonna prepare. Since the early centuries of the church, Christians having determined the date on which to celebrate the feast of the resurrection of Jesus, the Christian Passover, Easter Day, we prepare for it with spiritual practices and disciplines, knowing that we value and observe with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, we prepare for those days by a season of penitence and fasting. We back up from Easter Day, six and a half weeks, and on Ash Wednesday, we begin retraining our spirits with, spirit, with self-examination and uh, repentance by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, by reading the Bible and meditating on it. This we call the season of Lent. All six Sundays in the season are still days of our Lord, days of our Lord and days of resurrection, but they have a Lenten theme too, as you've already noticed by our hymns and by some of the ways we're going about our worship. But the other 40 days of the season are days of Lent. Sometimes we coach each other to think of the season as a walk with Jesus toward his cross and the astounding mystery of his resurrection. In some fashion, we're taking up a focused spiritual journey into Christ, into his radical ways of grace and mercy, into the startling nature of the kingdom of God that he preached into his encounters, his teaching, praying, thinking, and finally, into his surrender to the authorities. So we're in a long walk with Jesus and a journey into Jesus Christ. We're unafraid of confession, I hope, in this season, honest, admission because of our confidence that God will forgive, that we are covered in God's mercy and grace. I love that phrase from the psalm. It was uh, really powerful. Remember me according to your love, O Lord, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. That's where we get the confidence to honestly self-examine and confess to God. We're in this journey, and this is our time to identify with Jesus. Remember, you get to build the experience of this season any way you want to. Some find a book they want to absorb a time of day that they want to pray, a spiritual practice that they want to stay with in great uh, discipline through the season. You've chosen uh, a great thing to do here 
today. You've chosen to come here to be with your spiritual family and to lift up your hearts to the Lord around this altar to give thanks to God and praise as Christ sacramentally gives himself to you. The number 40 comes into the sacred story many times in our Bible. And the 40 days of Lent correspond uh, greatly to the days in the wilderness that Jesus spent, driven there by the Spirit after his baptism. The Gospel tells us that uh, of the opening of Jesus' public ministry in that way, on the surface of it, it started small. Now the news was big, but the context was so obscure. We encounter today in the Gospel the Savior's inaugurated proclamation of the fulfillment of time, the kingdom of God come near, time to repent, to believe the good news, he started alone and praying in the wilderness. He'd gone down into the waters of the Jordan for a rite facilitated by his cousin, John the Baptist, and just after it, Jesus was alone in the desert, driven there by the Spirit, a long stretch of solitude. Only Jesus knew what he knew of the emerging days of preaching with signs of the kingdom. His family knew things, but probably with no certainty of precisely what they knew. There had been dreams and angelic visitations, messages, a mystifying birth, and probably other things. It is ours today to place ourselves at this beginning, the baptism of Jesus in and being in the desert with him. We see the water first, hear the voice, see the descending spirit, and then we feel the dry wind of the wilderness, the the bright, warm sun, the cold desert night. We witness his strong stand against that lying adversary, the devil. Perhaps we sense eerily and beautifully the presence of angels as they minister in assistance and devotion to the carpenter becoming rabbi, to the anointed one. In fact, you're going to think I'm a little bit nuts here. That's okay. Um, As an exercise in sacred imagination, place yourself there. Place yourself there with all your insights, human insights of perception and observation intact. But say in the form of a lizard. First at his baptism, there you are, lounging on a rock near the Jordan River. And you see all who are gathered there. It is a picture of perfection there somehow. And there his cousin presiding, he goes down into the Jordan waters, Jesus in the water. And then he comes up in the sunlight and he sees the heavens torn open and the spirit rushing toward him. As water drains off and little streams from his body, now He is spirit-drenched. And the Father's voice pours over him too and envelops him. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. He is immersed in that declaration of his identity. There is union of the Holy Three revealed. Then... This effusion of the divine abruptly opens a season 
of bare survival within the human reality. The Spirit drives Jesus out into the wilderness, and he goes alone. But you, being who you are, you scamper out there with him too, and you find another rock to sit on. And you watch through the weeks, doing your thing, of course, you must, but watching the man in the desert, just watching him. There's little water and less food, and he interfaces with the adversary. Jesus holds strong through temptation. His only friendly company, the likes of you and other wild beasts in the desert, darting and slithering about, and also celestial creatures serving him, supplying his needs. We, the beasts, and the angels keep him company. Creatures from above know his earthly home, his heavenly home, and creatures of the wilderness know his earthly home. Together we bracket the Savior as he commences his announcement of the kingdom of God. Something indescribable has begun there and will unfold over the next three years that of Jesus' life that will follow. No, you don't have to stay a reptile. Uh, you can just be you. And through this Lent, you can prepare your way. It will fit you. But fold yourself into everything that you can learn and experience of Jesus. Journey into him. Feel your spirit wrapped in his spirit. Let him form you and shape you in these 40 days. Become the disciple he knows you can be. Let us pray. O oh, solitary in the desert, companion of the wild beasts in the lonely land, whose fast was broken at the hands of angels, call us, O oh Jesus, into your open wilderness to encounter your lavish emptiness and the fullness of your hunger, that we may find ourselves sustained through you alone and included in the circle that you complete. Amen. Amen.